Hello, everyone. On February the 16th, we are going to have the Leo full moon, which is really, truly fascinating. I mean, it's it's uh, it's something that I, I can't ever um, feel all over because um, because I promised myself that I'm not going to look at each and every full moon and, and new moon. But full moons and new moons are terribly important, not just in astrology, but in everyday life. So I still look at them and I always see some interesting things. And this particular one is really revealing of our times, uh, of our chances uh, and uh, a lot more. So let's take a peek on uh, this particular full moon, which uh, will be exact on uh, February uh, the 16th, and the London time for it is 16.56, so 4.56 p.m. And in the London chart, we have Leo rising, and the moon is rising at the, the exact moment of the full moon. Of course, full moons are about completion, about harvesting, and uh, Leo is always linked to some sort of, sort of creativity, individuality, self-expression, something that I would like to show the world. Uh, and of course, uh, the Aquarius sun is in exile in this particular sign, while the moon uh, is uh, in the sun's uh, sign. So this, this sun in exile is ruling uh, the moon in, in, in uh, the sun sign. So it's, 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 it's a... It's even more important it, it, to my mind. Uh, uh, Leo new moons and and uh, Capricorn new moons are really important uh, because because of the, uh, the 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 reception. Okay, so let's see what we have here. First of all, we have a double fixed karmic cage. Karmic cages uh, uh, occur when you have the nodal axis and. Uh, planet is exactly squaring them. This is the uh, the, the space-time moment that carries it because um, both the sun and the moon are squaring the nodal axis. Whenever you have this in your chart, uh, uh, it really emphasizes the, the, the chance to understand your destiny choices much earlier than usual. In, in, normal, in a normal uh, course of events, uh, we probably do uh, or, or, or leave out our uh, south node for approximately half of our lifetime, um, sometimes even longer. And uh, after the midlife crisis or, or around the, the uh, Chiron return at the age of 51, uh, we all of a sudden may realize that this is not our cup of tea. This is something that we are either bored of or just uh, it's just unproductive or inefficient. And then we start doing something else, something totally different, diagonally opposed to what we already know. And that is when we usually accept the challenges of the North Node. Uh, so it's the South Node that we live out for half our lifetime and the North Node is something that we are actually starting to do. Except when you have a T-square uh, between the nodal axis and a planet. And here you have a double T-square, so it's a ground cross, a double karmic cage with the two luminaries. And those are always the, the best uh, for uh, starting your destiny choices much earlier because they are also illuminating. So here you have a double illumination. Uh, the moon illuminates it on a psychic level and the sun gives you insight uh, actually how and what to do and how to proceed uh, in your life. So this is a very relevant space-time moment. The south node is, um, of course, in Scorpio, the nodal axis uh, has changed signs a couple of weeks uh, ago. They did they, they change signs, uh, I think, on the, maybe the 18th of January, so barely a month ago. And now they are going to travel in the Taurus uh, Scorpio axis for the next one and a half years. And so you have the fixed signs here, the end of the fixed signs emphasized in the karmic cage. Uh, the fixed uh, com double karmic cage is kind of dissolved by a fixed Earth engine uh, with the um, Pluto trine to the North Node and Sedna. Uh, the Pluto Sedna trine is fascinating because it's not going to be exact this year. I was hoping. I, I, I this was. I mean, this this is really kind of a dull year when you look at it from an astrological point of view. 
no big, big uh, aspects. Like in the past couple of years, we really had a couple of really biggies. I mean, uh, either if you consider the Aries Pluto square or or the even the Uranus uh, uh, Saturn square, uh, we really could and live those aspects. And this year in 2022, uh, we don't have anything biggie really. The only thing is the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. That's but it ha happens every five years, so it's not such a, a, a an unusual aspect. But I was really hoping for the Pluto Sedna try because I'm really hoping that the bird is going to transform itself because what is happening now is just the sheer craziness and the sheer uh, idiocy. It can't go really longer, much longer because the whole bird is going to die in it. And Pluto is of course transformation, transmutation as well. And certainly you know, it's, um, creation through dissection. It, it's uh, it's um, an energy pattern that you can utilize when uh, you are able to realize the non-working segments of your life and you can rearrange them into a workable, more plausible, more feasible uh, potential. So it gives you a fresh start. Both planets actually give you a fresh start. And of course, the Earth trine helps you to bring down the whole thing into the Earth plane, except it's not going to happen. Uh, it, the trine is almost there in two minutes of an arc or one, maybe one minute of an arc, but it's not going to be exact. So the potential will, will show itself, okay? We may even glint, uh, get more than a glimpse on what it's going to do, but the true change, the true uh, transformation will come in 2023 and throughout 2023 and into 24. So those will, will be the, the big decisive years when hopefully we are going to go down to the earth plane and be more realistic about the, the things that we, we used to know quite well, okay? As Douglas Murray often says, how did we get to this position where we question things that we already knew? And this is really ridiculous, let's face it. Now, uh, the uh, but still, uh, the Pluto Sedna uh, uh, trine is the, the dissolution of this uh, uh, double karmic cage, and uh, this is this is the engine. This is a fixed Earth engine. The square portion is between Sedna North Node and the Moon, and of course Pluto is making a quincunx to the to the Moon, which uh, Julie Hall called the Hades Moon. So uh, the soul is going down to the underworld, and of course the Pluto. Uh, North Node Trine is also a nice one because it gives you the chance to transform your uh, destiny choices. So that's the space-time moment. And then let's take a look at the next slide, sorry. Okay, and uh, uh, what else can we show here in this London chart? This is the, for the London chart. So a couple of the things you won't have if you, uh, if you relocate the, the space-time moment elsewhere. For instance, you won't have the IC North Node Queen de Chile and the MC South Node Queen de Chile. You have this Queen de Chile ribbon. Queen de Chile is about obsession and ambition. It's, it's 165 degree. And the ribbon itself, um, uh, well, actually co co um, joins the MCIC angle and the North, North Node South Node angle, and it gives you this, the, the past and the future. This is some kind of flowing pathway between the pa past and the, and the future. And you, uh, but this is only for the London moment. You, you don't have this anywhere else. And uh, at the same time, Paula Safina has just changed uh, signs. So it went into, from Pisces into Aries, which is much better for her. Uh, uh, instead of being the uh, wise hermit, uh, of course, uh, Palestina rules wisdom as well. Uh, she is now showing the, the fighting spirit, fighting for my home, for my homeland, for my nation. Okay, she was the protector of Athens. Uh, so this is this is in the next couple of weeks. This is what the uh, the uh, face that we are going to show uh, that she's going to show us and we can utilize it, of course. And so it makes a, uh, a dissociate quinghongs uh, at the uh, full moon moment with, with uh, uh, the moon. Uh, both are in, in the fire signs, which means that this is a quinghongs with trine energies. 
So the, uh, the, the, the finger of fate is not really happening. It's not closing between Pluto and Pallas Athena. And there's an exact Venus Mars conjunction. Uh, you can watch it uh, or observe it in the morning sky sometime before um, sunrise. And uh, it's not rare. Every year you have a, a Mars-Venus conjunction. It's just interesting because it has been that the, the two uh, personal plans have been moving together for the last couple of uh, days, even weeks. And now they are exactly conjunct, almost to the minute. I think there's two seconds uh, between them or two, something like that. So really, really, really close. Uh, and uh, we will get back to this, uh, this conjunction because I want to show, show you something interesting, how this conjunction, which is a perfect conjunction in the natal chart, looks like in the sky you will be surprised because they, uh, the definition is different. So here are the um, transcendental celestial objects uh, for the space-time moment. The sun is conjunct Helena and uh, Guinea, which is the, which is epsilon thing, was, there are two Guineas. Uh, one is, uh, is uh, I think, uh, 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 star in Forbes, so the, um, the, rave, the raven, but the other one, Cygnus, uh, the swan, is linked to shamanic energy. So this is shamanic healing. Uh, uh, the sun uh, at the moment has healing properties. And the moon is conjunct or aligned with Athafera, which is Zeta Leo. You can see the, I give you the name of the um, fixed stars. Uh, the stars are always in red. Uh, these uh, centaurs are in blue and the asteroids are in, in purple. So you can, color, uh, you can follow the color coding. And I give you the constellation uh, for the stars and also the magnitude. Uh, this is how bright they are, so you can follow that as well. Now, Atafira is an important star for healing, uh, again, um, suicide victims. It's quite interesting that in th these last couple of days, this healing energy for suicidal uh, deeds uh, and suicide can, as I said many times, you can commit suicide by simply taking your own life or leading a type of life where you slowly or um, not so slowly simply destroy your physical body. Both are suicidal, okay? And Atafir is one of the healing birds of suicide victims um, and it's now uh, aligned with the moon. Uh, so your soul can be healed. Uh, this is a very strong thread in the, the, um, the topic of this particular full moon. Venus, the Venus-Mars conjunction is on Arachne, a, one of the hubris asteroids, and Rugbat, which is the, um, um, the knee of the celestial uh, archer, and it denotes steadiness and strength. And then Pluto is on Icarus and Pan. Icarus is another hubris asteroid. Pan is, uh, is uh, the, the, it denotes two things, panic, Okay, and also everything, the universe, the universal energies. And uh, the two can be connected uh, if you think about what you do uh, in a panic situation. Most of the people react to a panicking situation that they start uh, doing stuff that they, that it actually crosses their limits. So that you, you are always able to do much more, much bigger stuff when you are panicking because it gives you superhuman energies. And then Amicus, again, is the uh, centaur that is uh, dashing into a sanctuary, grabbing a candelabra and fighting with it. So the profane and the sacred uh, mixture of uh, deeds, uh, that sort, those sort of karmic wounds are, uh, uh, are linked to Amicus. The North Node is very interesting because first of all, it's on Sedna. It has been on Sedna for a while. And you have three asteroids, Eos, Plato and Ashurbanipal. Eos is the um, uh, the dawn, okay, come the new the new day, signi the signifying uh, uh, the fact that there's always a new dawn, there's always a new day, there's always a new potential. Plato, which is uh, uh, a famous uh, a philosopher, so uh, think about philosophy, put philosophy into your life. And Ashurbanipal, who was a um, uh, ruler in Babylon. Uh, you may uh, heard, have heard about him because he had a huge palace and an even huger um, uh, library. And uh, I, I believe he, he, the library, they uncovered about 80,000 um, tablets in his library. 
half of them were burned, but uh, some are in very good condi condition. And uh, some of them are ex actually exhibited in, in the, the British Museum. But don't think that museums are there for showing what we should know. Museums are huge repositories of knowledge that we shouldn't know. Okay, things are pegged into uh, vaults and, and, and crates and, and, uh, and boxes, never to open, okay? You can't touch them. You're not going to show uh, the, uh, the public, you know, what's in there because they don't want us to know, or, uh, to, to understand our past. So that's Ashu, Ashu Barnipal kind of reminds us that, yes, please go to the library. Uh, don't count on uh, the knowledge you can find on the internet. In, the internet is wonderful. You can find everything there. Yes, but uh, what happens if someone decides to just switch off the lights, switch off electricity, then what are you going to do? Go to a library, okay, get real books. No one can take away your real books. Uh, so uh, do that. And then Olgo, which is Beta Persos, uh, uh, is a probably the, uh, the, the, the most wicked star, although stars can never be wicked. Stars are not part of the uh, solar system. They are part of the universe. They are higher dimensional worlds. So human, human um, labors don't allow uh, to be used for them because they are celestial energies. They are much higher than planets or, or um, the sublunar world, which is our world. And um, uh, so to call a star wicked, is, is a terrible mistake. Agul means in Arabic, uh, the demon. And uh, the Arabs were very much afraid of this star. Whenever it was really blinking, they didn't, they didn't do anything because they were afraid of the curse. Uh, and of course, it's, it's the head of the Medusa, uh, which Perseus cuts off and then uh, uh, saves the world by uh, killing the monster that turned everyone into into stone just by looking at people, but anyhow, uh, uh, Argoal is a the healing word, one of the healing words for very difficult feminine lives. So it's like a it's like a mystery school, a feminine mystery school. That's how we look at it in transcendental karmic astrology. The south node uh, has Atropos and Epimetheus uh, and Seto. And Seto is interesting because it denotes toxic uh, emotions, but the healing word appears as well because Deneb Kaitos, the beta of uh, Star of Setus, is one of those healing words for toxic emotions. The whole constellation uh, Setus is just below the uh, uh, zodiac. It's one of the uh, uh, so called liminal space. Uh, constellations that uh, I think Bernard Brady wrote about it in, in his uh, in her um, uh, newsletters once. How there are liminal spaces in uh, on the zodiac, which means that one con constellation stops and the other one doesn't start yet. So there's a hiatus, there's a, a gap there. And in this case, the one uh, the constellation that is below uh, the zodiacal constellations is taking over those degrees. And such hiatus is, or liminal space, is between Aries and Taurus, and Cetus is taking it over. And uh, the way she describes it is that the, 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 the subconscious is emerging. Yes, but you know, feelings are linked to subconscious uh, urges. And this is one of the healing words for such toxic emotions that are actually on the South North, so you're bringing them in from past lives. So, uh, and Atropos is uh, the third of the fates who is cutting the thread of your life. So it's, uh, it's again linked to, yes, it is linked to suicide. So again, the topic of suicide and the, the potential healing of, of such a deed is there. And uh, Epimetheus is Prometheus's brother who, who, who is the one who knows after. Prometheus means the one who knows before. So it, it, uh, it denotes insight into situations ahead of time, clear insight, clairvoyance uh, in a way. And Epimetheus is, is uh, the antidote or the um, antithesis of uh, uh, Prometheus. And 
he, he is usually described as a clumsy figure who is not actually understanding only afterwards. But in, again, in comic astrology, we link this archetype to the ability to understand and analyze and, 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 and draw conclusions after the fact, after a uh, 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 happening, after an occurrence. So that's that's on the South Node and then Pallas Athena is the link to the, the healing energies of such toxic emotions, uh, which we understood only after the fact and were even willing to maybe die for, something like that. On the IC of the uh, London chart, you have two bright stars, Alfeca and Acrux. These are at very, very dif different uh, portions of the sky. Acrux is Alpha Crux, the, uh, the uh, Southern Cross, uh, the Alpha Star of Southern Cross, very bright star, beautiful bright star. This is almost down at the uh, South Pole. So you can only see this constellation uh, from the Southern Hemisphere. And it, it uh, uh, describes the, the crust of matter, how you accept the cross of matter, how you come into the uh, earth plane, how you accept your physical body. So actually the, 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 very, the very deed of coming into incarnation, accepting the burden of the physical life. And Alfeca is the uh, alpha of Corona Borealis. Uh, and it's linked to feminine um, um, happiness, uh, she, uh, I mean, the whole the whole constellation describes the, ga the, the garland, the, the feminine crown, which is uh, usually worn uh, either in a on a wedding or in just a just a happy occasion. So it's the 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 the, the joys of life. It's very interesting that these two stars are aligned uh, at the same. It's they are around twelve degrees uh, um, Scorpio at the moment. And one describes the cross of matter, the burdens that we are accepting. And the other one is allowing us to lift ourselves out of the burden and concentrate on the happy periods, uh, the happy moments of life. And so here are the constellations and the stars. Here's Rugbat. Uh, I already showed you this many, many times. Pluto is there, so it's going to be there for uh, quite a while. Not Pluto, sorry, sorry. Um, the, the Venus uh, Mars conjunction is there. Pluto was there a long time ago. Uh, here's Gina, uh, Cygnus. Here's Acrux. And uh, this is Beta, um, Satus, uh, Danapkaitos. And here you have uh, the Corona Borealis Alpha, Alfeca. And somewhere you have uh, um, two more. Yes, here's Agol. So you have the whole Perso story. And this is how he cuts off Medusa's head. And that's Agol. And Adhafira is in the main of the Celestial Leo. And uh, so the whole, um, the, this is the, the whole uh, constellation of Leo is linked to, to rulership, to sovereignty. And this is what I wanted to show you that in the natal chart of the moment, you will see Venus Mars conjunction, a very tight conjunction, uh, really to the minute. But if you look at the planetary planetarium, you see that Venus is closer to the celestial equator. It's around 17 degrees uh, to the south. One of such uh, portions is 10 degrees, so it should be 17 uh, something. And Mars is almost um, uh, out of bounds. It's actually 23 degrees. It may be out of bounds, actually. Uh, I need to, to check it. But it's really at the, at the edge of the, um, uh, of the uh, zodiac, so to speak. Uh, and this is Rubat, uh, the alpha star of... Uh, of the celestial archer. And you can see that these are all aligned. So they are not conjunct actually, because as you can see, yes, in the zodiacal degree and minute, they are conjunct, but in the declinations, they are not. They are at three different levels uh, uh, as seen from, the, from the, the celestial equator. So these are the energy patterns for this coming full moon. A happy full moon for you. Um, again, it's a Leo full moon, and Leo is full of creativity and and personal achievements, individuality, and uh, and joy are the key words. And of course, as full moons are about fulfillment, uh, try to fulfill something 
that is really important to you. You can utilize the energy pattern, especially when you have things at 27 degrees, give it a one or two degree orb either way. So anywhere between 60, 26 and 28, you can definitely utilize this particular full moon. And I hope you will be. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.